Welcome back. It's Kenny Foster here again, and I can't believe it, but we're here with our very last episode of CMA Foundation. So you want to write a song? I I feel like it's blown by. <laughs> Crazy. We've covered a lot. We've gone through the big idea of why we're writing a song in the first place, what to consider when we do. We've talked about the rules that we needed to follow concerning structure, identifying pieces of a song, what their purposes are, and serving the big idea so that people can recognize and respond in the ways that we mean for them to. And then we talked about the work behind it. Rhyme scheme, meter, best word choice, rhythm. And then we even put the craft to work last episode where we wrote in real time, we wrote as much as we could and we picked the best parts to fit into a structure that we could recognize, AKA a song. We saw that collaboration can help lighten the load a little bit and that finding common ground through discussion of our big ideas can help narrow down what we really, really mean to say. So today's episode is called The Reveal. And I gave our students their most challenging homework to date, saving the best for last, that's what I like to do. I asked them to finish the song we started last time, following the rules that we'd established about melody and rhythm and timing when we were together. So I hope that when they were left to their own devices, they can call back on some of the things that we talked about to this point and hopefully found it a little bit helpful. The reason we're calling this the reveal is because what we're gonna talk about this whole episode is what it means to present a work and to talk about it and all the aspects and thought process, processes that go into taking that next step from creation into revelation, into performance, into sharing. Um, after we've shared what each student has done, we're gonna talk about ways to take the next steps beyond sharing, including performing, recording, talk a little bit about videoing. We're gonna talk about how to self-publish. Uh, but first, it's time to welcome back all of our future songwriters. What is going on, my beautiful people? Hi. <laughs> we got one more of these. Are you ready? Are you strapped in? Yes. Almost sad. I'm gonna miss these. Oh, I, I appreciate that. I am too. It's like I feel like we should all go to a diner and, and eat hamburgers <laughs> till late at night. We could if only it'd be amazing. We go to In N Out. I love In N Out. We'd go animal style, we do some off menu stuff, and we would just sit there and eat fries and talk about what is going on. And I would love it. And maybe we can. I don't know. Just throwing it out there. Like come on in La La Land with all y'all. Songwriting is, it's a beast, you know, because it's so, it's almost ethereal. Like you almost can't reach out and grab it. And hopefully what we've done over this last week is, has sort of helped us at least sort of pinpoint, at least try to start grabbing a few of these ideas and pinning them down on this paper so that we can, when we learn the rules like a professional we can break them like an artist right this is the these are the rules that we're trying to go at here but um so we're getting ready to share our ideas with everybody here in this room and anybody else who's watching this thing my question to you is are you guys nervous at all are there a little bit of nerves no no <laughs> good i love that because the thing about after we've written a song like we have to we're gonna have to share it with somebody. Sometimes we don't always have the confidence for that. And sometimes in, in a situation like this, in this room, I'm glad y'all aren't nervous because this is totally a safe space to share these ideas. Uh, there's this thing here. Um, let's talk about some rules of engagement before we share our ideas here. Um, so I'm, I'm part of this group called The Fold here in Nashville. It's called The Fold Nashville. Um, you can follow them on the Instas or what have you, but we get together uh, as songwriters and we do free rights. Um, it's prompted free writes. So somebody will say a thing and then we will just write for seven minutes or 12 minutes all in the room together. And then we'll be sharing them immediately afterwards with each other. And so it's a way to sort of like get that, get those gears turning, get you thinking about ideas and maybe even concepts that you wouldn't have done necessarily that day. Um, the thing I really like about it is that we have immediate feedback from our peers, um, but there are some rules of engagement on that feedback. So whenever someone shares their ideas, um, it's never in critique and it's never an offer to change. It's always, it's always based around three ideas. And this may be really helpful if you guys are collaborating or if you're thinking about sharing in one of those spaces. Um, one of them is what is strong. Number two, what stands out? And number three, what sticks with you? So as we, as we express our ideas, uh, in these concepts, I, uh, we may want to ask those questions of you guys, of each other's work, so we can just kind of get stretch that muscle a little bit too about what it means to share um, our words around a particular concept, because sometimes that can be a little scary or a little daunting. Yeah. And I'm really, really glad that you guys don't feel that way 
right now. So that makes me feel super good. Okay, Angela. I'm not going to read the whole song, but just what I sent in. No, no, that's fine. Okay, great. So we've just come out of a chorus. And Angela, you were dropping us into a second verse. Am I right? Yeah. So I was going to, I just said, we need to come together, even if it's slow. We need to take that step that will allow us all to grow. That's what I said. Cool. Cool. Let's, let's do a little bit of this for everybody. All right. Um, cool. So the way that I would hear that, if I can, um, we can follow our previous melodies. We've already set up those expectations inside our first verse. Um, yeah. So we need to come together, even if it's slow. We need to take, we need to take that step that allows us all to grow. Da -da -da -da. So we could either go into a pre-chorus right after there, if we wanted to redo that pre-chorus, or I like Hannah. I know we can hear. <laughs> no, what? Talking. That part that Hannah sent in, like that would fit so. Oh, perfect. you can hear it right there. Yeah. Mm, okay. Did you see later? I used the same rhyme as you. I ended with grow. Again. Oh. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> that's really, really cool. That's real. That's. You were just basic. <laughs> <laughs> Need to come together. So in this case, what often happens? Uh, I know, um, in pro rights and in, in, in when we're in rooms trying to write these things day after day, um, we find a half verse. Just the one stanza that you've written there, Angela, is really helpful. It's actually, it gets us back to that chorus quickly and, and gives us just a little bit of time. So there's not too much space to get us back in. Um, so yeah, this is what we call a half verse. We're going to talk about this. So um, coming out of that chorus, allow us all to grow. Because it could be love. It could be peace. It could be you. Perfect. Excellent. Um, Hannah, were you were you offering to go next? Is that what was happening? Yeah, I basically did the same thing. That's just like a verse. A half I verse, it. but I see something else below that. I'm wondering if that's bridge material. I'm going to let you do it first. Oh, though. maybe. I don't know. <laughs> so hit me with it. What do you got? Um. Yeah, so for the first part, I was thinking of it could be like a, a half verse. It was... Um, I'm not going to sing it. And I know we can hear the words of our brothers and give a voice, a hand, a way to feel for each other. Cool. And then we could do Angela's thing. And then my second half verse could okay. be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So your second mm -hmm. half verse that you're talking about here. The interesting yeah. thing is, even though it is in the same format as our verse, because you followed the exact same. Yeah. Um, same rhyme scheme, same rhythm. Um, we can change the melody on that and turn that into a bridge piece. Derek, what do you think, man? On the level? See, what do you ask? So I was just working through my- No, no worries, man. Um, do you wanna share with us? Are you gonna play it? Are you gonna say it? What are you gonna do? I think this could, um, this is a bridge. I kind of rearranged how I did it. Okay. Cause I don't know if you remember last week how I made one. And it was like A B A B. Uh huh. I think a rhyme like that. Yeah. And then I made it more like A A B B. Okay. It would fit better for um. For a bridge. Like a two chord, a two chord bridge, like how yeah. it like, yeah. So I said we all know that there are things we can regret, many reasons for people to be upset. It may seem like things are going down the hill, but if we haven't been the end of us, then nothing will. There we so go. So I don't know if I'll go to like a B minor. Really good. <laughs> cool, man. Try. And I know we can hear. I'm gonna go back to Hannah. It's the words of our brother. Give a voice, a hand, a way to feel for each other. Da -da -da -da. I almost want to go to a pre there. The world of our parents. Ain't the world we know. From everything we do, it's up to us to grow. Cause it could be love, it could be peace. You see, see how those are flowing together without having to break too much from our melody. That I mean, that stanza, while it is very similar and even the same as the verse, by changing the underlying chords that we just had um, to fit our pre-chorus, we can end up saying a new thing, bringing new attention to that new thought, 
and then loading back into that chorus that we wrote. So, um, we all know things, we all know the little things we regret. Many reasons that we have to be upset. It may seem like things are going down the hill. But if we had, but if we hadn't been the end of us, nothing will. You know, maybe it's a, you know, in just trying to fit those rhythms in and into each other, but it doesn't. Um, we all know that there are things that we regret. Many reasons that we had to be upset. It may seem like things are going down the hill. But if we haven't been the end of us, nothing will. It could be love. It could be peace. Is that doable? Is that workable? Is it close? It's so hard over Zoom, right? Because if we were in the room together, you could just play your thing and I would sing over the top of it. But with delays and timing and all that kind of stuff, it's tough. Um, is that close, Derek? Is that what you're envisioning or you want it to be faster? Something like that. I want it to be slower because okay. um, last time it was like, it fit like with the verse. Mm -hmm. I think it'll fit better with it going slower. And like we could figure out a way to make that rhymes like better. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Well, and then there's more syllables that probably need to be added in or taken away just to get that meaning. So whatever that melody that we end up landing on, so then that can set up. Um, I don't mind that last line being different because that's what we've done the entire time. You know, even in our verses, we've had two lines and then that third line has been an internal rhyme that kind of rolls on top of each other. And so everyone's going to be used to hearing that. And so I have no problem with it being like that here in the bridge as well. Um, great job, everybody. I think this was really cool. Um, and I'm really glad. Do you guys see the reasons, concepts, musically, rhythm, rhythmically, why each one of these fits in its particular section? Yeah. Does that make sense to you? Totally. Um, what about messaging here too, right? So um, we have moved from um, just talking about and asking questions. Now we've moved in, in Angela's example, we, we went ahead and started giving explanations or giving answers to those questions um, or suggestions even, right? Um, Hannah does the same thing. Um, she goes in, she says, I know we can hear words of her brothers and these she's providing a solution to the thing that we just said so in our verses we said what if what if what if in our choruses we said it could be and now in the second verse we're moving to a new thought process a new idea this is the way that it can be like yeah. this is the way that we can do that here are some action items which i think is really cool and really works and then i love um, both of the suggestions of bridges, both from Hannah and, uh, and from Derek, because she says the world of our parents, we haven't talked about parents yet. We haven't talked about relationships at all. We've really just talked about us. We've talked about them. And so by bringing in this new concept, it gets us a chance in a bridge to flip, right? To flip that idea, to say the world of our parents isn't the world we know. Like, so that's putting pressure on us. Like we're the ones that need to draw this forward. And I think, like I said, the bridge is usually the place that the big idea lives in its most succinct state. I think that does it, right? Yeah. It says, given all of these things, and then given the way that it could be, and here are my action items, because what I really mean to say is, this world is not the one that came before, and it's up to us to make it that way. So I think that that's a cool way to do it. And in Derek's, he, he's, he's removing himself from the situation too, because it was a bunch of questions and suggestions. And now it's saying, look, we all know, not what if, not we could, not it could be, it's we do know, boom, definitive. So he's changed his voice in this bridge to like drive this big idea home. We all know there are things that we regret. Many reasons for people to be upset. Boom, statement, statement. And now what's he doing? So it may seem like things are going downhill. Final emotional line, but if it hadn't been the end of us, nothing will. And I think that's what you 
gathered on before, Derek, we talked about it um, on our last episode, was basically saying, save those emotional, those ones that get those rise out of it. Save it for musical moments that make sense. And ends of phrases, ends of stanzas, those are the ones that make sense, right? It's why the hook is usually at the end. It's why we make people wait for the bridge. It's why we ask the interesting questions and transition into our new parts with something intriguing that pulls people along into the next section. Um, because that's, if, if we really were using Derek's as a bridge and we were tying, trying to tie in the big idea as plain speaking as we can, we did that. And then the very last thing we said is this message of hope or whatever. And then he's, he's slamming into this chorus, which we've already said, which yeah. I think backs it all up in the first place, right? So the real key, the, the difference I think between like a good song or, or, or a written song and a well-crafted song are those other considerations, right? The ones in messaging, the ones where, the, where each line is leading us to the next, that's opening thoughts and painting pictures and moving us forward. Um, and because you can put words into form all day long. And I think the only thing as you're crafting, the more songs you write, you recognize, ah, oh, when I did this, it made people feel this. Or when I did this, I got this reaction. And we're paying attention as songwriters or as performers or as what have you to, to doing that, to recognizing those moments. To be a songwriter is to be curious, right? It's to look around, it's to see what's going on, it's to see how it's being affected and all of the interactions in between. So thank you guys for doing that homework. I really love it. I think it's cool. Let's talk a little bit about, so now we have a song, you know, we, we've written a song. We've got the whole of it. We've got intros. We've got verses, pre-choruses, choruses. We've got a bridge with two chords in it and a walk down. And now we have to figure out how do we share this? In what ways do we have to do that? You guys have so many more tools at your disposal uh, than most people do. Um, or, and then most generations before you did. Um, but first let's talk about, it's not necessarily the easiest one, but it's, it seems to be the, the most direct because you don't need extra tools, you don't need anything else, performance. So the, the easiest way to get this song is to perform it, whether it is in your home with somebody that you know and love for your family. Um, it's, it's important when you move to that performance, how many of you guys would say you, you are performers, that is your intention when you write a song? The end goal is to be able to perform your song. Like that must feel sure. so. And do you all see yourself as the type that wants to be that singer or player or what have you? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So the thing about that is when you get outside of this realm that is school or camp or, or, some, or church or whatever, a lot of them have opportunities, right? They'll have a talent show or they have a regular meeting or they have a rally, or they, there, there are opportunities to share these songs, right? And it's important for you as a performer, not just as a songwriter, to recognize what those are. And sometimes that takes finding the person who is in charge of organizing that. Who is the person that you would ask that you, to, to ask if you could play, right? Can I, do you mind if I play? Is it okay if I play? Here's this song. Um, I've played it for my parents. It's pretty good. You know, there are particular levels of where you want to go. But when you're thinking about performing these things, you have to figure out what is the forum? Who do I need to talk to to get that opportunity to come to me? Because otherwise, it's just a song in our room. And if the goal, end goal is to perform it and to affect as many people as possible, especially after we've figured out how good it is because we've fine-tuned it and we've crafted it as well as we could, that's one of the things that you have to consider when you start moving into that performance aspect. Um, talk through the process of, of, of who you need to talk to. Um, prepare yourself because once you perform something, it, it's no longer yours. That's the interesting thing about art, right? As soon as it exists in the world, it becomes everybody else's to say and do what they want. And so it's also important that every time as a performer, you need to know that like the hardest part of being a performer and a songwriter and expressing yourself, especially in these cathartic moments, um, is that you're putting yourself out there to be vulnerable. It is, a, it is a brave sort of thing. And so what you need to realize is that if an opportunity doesn't come your way or a reaction doesn't come the way that you expect it to, that's not a reflection on you. And it's not a reflection necessarily upon the message itself. 
Um, though, if you are getting more positive messages and more feedback, that's going to encourage you to do more of the same thing. Am I right? So when somebody gives you positive feedback, you know, when that positive feedback continues to grow, then you know, you're getting better. Right? So as people respond, so the very first parts can sometimes be the ones that knock you down the most because your expectations are up here. Like I'm going to be Frank Ocean. I'm going to be Beyonce. I'm going to be, but like, and in your mind you are right. But there's <laughs> fine tuning and it's, it's listening and paying attention as you're performing, even looking out in the faces of the crowd. Are they looking off? Are they, did they stop paying attention a long time ago? These are the tools that you have to be aware of. Like, I'm not doing a good enough job at A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And that stuff that it starts with your song. And your song, if your song is good enough, even if your performance is lackluster, people want to know what you have to say, even if, you're, even if you want to know. Um, sometimes you may find out, as you said, some of them are cathartic and need to be ours. Sometimes they're written for somebody else or it's a message that you know needs to be said, but maybe you're not the one to say it. Like, like I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure if I had a story, if, if I had ideas and through my reading, I decided to make something about these protests or about these riots that are going on, I'm not sure I'm the voice that should be the thing saying that. Like there are other people way more qualified. Yeah. And that's the interesting thing about writing a song. Sometimes the message is clear, but maybe you're not the vessel. I mean, there's an entire industry that's built off of that. That's what Nashville songwriting is. I mean, there are people you have never heard of that have written your favorite songs you've ever heard because the artist isn't necessary because the artist becomes the vessel for the idea for the song which is why i think it starts and which is why my passion is pouring into the song itself because whether or not you get to that stage where somebody gives you that big platform or gives you that label deal or gives you that opportunity to sing the national anthem or what have you if you are writing the song if you are if you are the controller of that idea if you are fine-tuning that ability then you can find outlets for that idea to live. You can find ways for that idea and for your person and your thoughts and your feelings to live on, especially if you think the, the world needs to hear them. Sometimes that's the only way is to maybe give that song to somebody who already has a platform while you're building your own. It doesn't have to be an either or, but you do have to recognize sometimes songs are for the moment and sometimes songs are for all time and you get to decide which is which, right? Um, so as a performer or whatever, don't worry about it. Collaboration is important. Like it, it, whether there's somebody who's a better player than you are. So you have them play alongside you. It's what bands are all about. Like everybody can't cover every instrument. So collaboration is key. It's just like TikTok. You got to do duets sometimes. And that's a way, that is a way for somebody to do something strong and you to do something strong alongside or with or on top of. Like that's the whole way this thing works. Um, and, and, and speaking of TikTok, let's go ahead and talk about video. Like there are platforms for you guys to record yourselves in video and audio, just like we're doing right now. That's how I know you guys have the ability to do this because we're doing a Zoom call together. I can hear you and I can see you. Therefore, you have all of the tools necessary that you need to start self-publishing videos of you playing your songs. And if you don't have you playing your songs, there is software where you, acapella, for instance, where you can literally sing a thing, send it to somebody, they can add their voice to it, and now you've built a thing. You can decide to video that. You can decide to string it together. You can invite them. If they're like, man, I really like this, but I wish this verse said this, that's an opportunity for you to say, well, no, I really like it that way. Let's leave it. Or you can be like, that's a great idea. So in, in similar ways, when you're collaborating, there's two different things to consider sometimes somebody's idea is going to bring you something new to think about something new they may add something to it that makes it better and so the interesting and most difficult thing i think about songwriting especially in collaborating and performing especially when you're collaborating is not only knowing when your thing is good and standing up for it but also recognizing when someone else's is good and that takes a lot of humility that takes the ability to say you know what that's that's better that's better, more people respond to that, and I see that. And I am willing to give up this, this portion or this line or this understanding in order for this message to move forward, in order for this performance to go better. And that's, that's sometimes the most difficult thing to recognize, right? Because it is so cathartic, it is so personal, and by putting it out in the world, we want people to understand us specifically. But when we are collaborating, 
when we are trying to get these songs into the world, when we are using these platforms, there are things we have to do to make sure that it is the best thing that it can be because that's the thing that we're serving, right? We're serving this entire time, the big idea. And that's why it's really important to know what that big idea is and to be very specific about it. You may do a collaboration once that doesn't turn out the way that you wanted it to, do it different next time. You've got more ideas in you, you've got more fire in you, you've got more passion in you, you can do this again, right? So think about, think about building a music YouTube channel. That is, still, that is still the number one discovery platform for music is YouTube. Think about it. It's really easy. It takes an email and you're not gonna get a bazillion followers at first and don't let anyone tell you that you are, but it is a way to start getting feedback and it gives you a platform that everyone has and you can send someone a link to your song. You can even make the video private and send it to them and say, hey, what do you think of this? It's a way for you to slowly get, before you let all of the masses start to troll you or say whatever it is that they want to do, or you can start slowly. You get to decide. It's your message. It's your song. You get to decide um, how that goes out and, and use those to your disposal. Because sometimes those YouTube videos may be the thing that you reference that gets you the performance opportunity. Because if somebody says, hey, uh, that sounds great. I'm sure the song is great, but how do I hear it? Then you can say, well, I've actually got this YouTube video. Why don't you go check me out? This is me, this is me performing it. And that's how they're going to make the distinct distinction. Are they good enough to give me this stage? Are they good enough to perform in this way? Do I like it? Like you have to give them the opportunity to say yay or nay to it. So that's another thing about sharing it. The other third thing, um, if you want to get nerdy about it, I, which I do, um, <clears throat> audio recording. How many of y'all have garage band? Do we have any garage banders here? You've all got garage band, which means you're on a Mac and I know you and I've found you and I know things, about, no. Um, but garage band is super easy. It's, it, it's, it's limited in its scope of what it's able to do, but you can even use your in laptop microphone and start doing multi-track recording with instruments, with voices. And you can, and I always recommend doing each one separately because then you can manipulate those things a little bit easier, but it's almost like a word document at this point, you know, control, copy, control, paste, cut, trim. You've got those options and you have in your computer that we're talking on right now, all the tools that you need. If you want to make the next step, there are other things. I'm going to go ahead. I'll give you two ideas the, the number one free, um, that's a little bit more dynamic. That's a little bit more manipulatable, um, is one called audacity. So if you guys want to check that out, I know that's the number one free uh, audio, audio uh, software in the world. And then um, there's a third one. Uh, this is an idea. If you really want to look at it, the way the pros are doing it, most every session that you hear in a movie and TV, uh, on the radio, um, on Spotify, most people are doing that out of Pro Tools. I don't know if you guys have heard of this, but it, it is a Pro Tools session. Uh, it's the most dynamic and that's an expensive piece of software. And they just recently started this thing. Um, I'm going to screw up the name. I'm sure of it. Pro Tools First is what it's called. And literally it's not a limited version. The only thing that it's limited is your number of tracks and the amount of space you have to store that information on. But you can use Pro Tools to the level that the pros are doing. You can find tutorials on YouTube that are going to teach you how to use it. And if you want to get super nerdy on it, I think for less than 200 bucks, you could probably go on Sweetwater, Musician's Friend, and you could put together an audio interface, buy a microphone and a stand, and start doing that if you want to go a little bit more professionally. The ones that aren't meant to be performed but still need to exist in the world, right? Um, there's ways for you guys to do this. And, and if worse comes to worse, we've all got one of these, and all you have to do is record it and send it to somebody. You can text it to them, you can email it to them, but that's a way to start revealing it in a way until you get the confidence to go ahead and rehearse and perform, until you get the confidence or the opportunity to be on that stage and doing that thing. Uh, these are all baby steps along the way and we're just on the first rung of that. Do you know what I mean to say? So look for those things, be curious and figure it out when you're trying to reveal these songs to the world when it comes around to it. Um, guys, that was a lot of information that was, it was like the craziest five sessions that I've been involved in in a long time. Um, I hope you guys got some stuff out of it. And what I wanted to do was take a little bit of time right now and give you guys an opportunity 
are there any questions that you have? This doesn't even have to be about songwriting. This can be about life or careers or guitars or just, Hannah, go ahead. Um, but so is I'm going to transfer out of community college, hopefully within two years or one year. Mm -hmm. um, and I do want to like have my own career in um, composing and stuff. I don't know if it's technically like, I don't know if I want to go like the classical route, but I just want to learn everything I can about all that stuff and like songwriting as well. Good. Um, but as far as like studying at a university goes, do you think I should, um, because you know how LA is like the place for film scoring and LA yes. is like a plot or whatever, but I kind of don't want to stay in LA and I want to like experience other things. Um, but you know how like universities for connections, is it dumb to study in a place that I'm not necessarily going to live in? Like Great right question. after. Great question. Um, one that I don't want to give you a definitive answer, but encourage mm -hmm. you to look at in a couple of different angles. Is that cool? You're cool with that? Okay. Um, I stayed in Nashville after college because this is where I knew everybody. So I have since then toured all over the place, but this is still home. And so what you don't recognize that you're doing when you're going to school is you are, especially if you're going to school for the trade that you go into, is that everybody else you're in school with is doing the same thing. And they were determined enough to do that, to go to a four-year degree. And so there are people that have bought into it. Like, I have friends with Grammys. I have friends that are producing massive events, uh, massive records that are coming out. But at the same time, um, it's only the ones that are coming through Nashville. But that's where their heart was, right? So you need to realize that in most cases, the whole world is not going to be yours at the end of this. So in the same way that we look for a big idea when writing a song, what's the big idea behind, what, what is the mountain for you that you're trying to climb? Um, because if it's to get a Grammy, there are ways to do that and probably ways to do that easier in different genres where there's not a lot of competition, um, where you can go in and the, the entry, the barrier to entry is really low. And then you can just get to know those people and you can be the interesting person bringing your ideas and make sure it's something you're passionate about that you want to stick in. So in that way, smaller markets, smaller genres are more helpful towards that goal. But if what you want to do is be part of a really big project, if you want to be writing for massive artists, you need to be making relationships with either those artists directly, those artists' teams, or you need or organizations that have inroads to those artists. And that isn't necessarily tied to a place. Um, those are organizations that can help you. Like I know people that are signed in New York but live in Nashville. Like I know people that are signed in Nashville and live in New York. Um, I know people that live in London that are signed out of LA. Um, so if you're gonna go to a four-year university for this, realize that most of your contacts are gonna come from the people that you interact with. And so whether that is your professors, the school's program itself, or the students in the class with you that are also gonna be doing this. You wanna talk about finding lifelong collaborators, that's kind of a cool way to do it. And that's why programs like Belmont, programs like Berkeley, that's, that's the melting pot. That's the smashing everybody who's like, look, you were the best where you came from, but guess what? You're not the best anymore. Are you still going to stick it out? Like, can you do that? That's one way to do it. Now, I'm going to give you another completely different thing. Are you ready? Yeah. Number two, you spend all of your time and efforts at wherever it is that you go to school, experiencing whatever it is, building a following on your own. You're not asking for a company to do it. You're not asking for, you literally, it's going to be your work and the following that you get together, that becomes your power. That becomes your bargaining chip. Um, there are people who are maybe not necessarily the best musicians or the best actors or the funniest comedians that have massive followings that are making a pretty good living doing it. There are people with massive record deals, massive deals that you hear all over the world, but maybe their deal was such that they're not, they, they, didn't, they didn't negotiate for a very big percentage. So they may be making less than someone who's on a middle tier record who gets 80% of what they make. So sometimes the thing that you're giving up in your career is the money. 
because they're taking the money they would have paid you and putting, putting it into your career instead. Does that make sense? Okay. So, so like there's, there's no one path. There's many, many paths. If the path is all you want, go for it. Go for it right now. Do not stop. Destroy the world until you have that thing. If you want to be, if you're like, there's things I want to experience before I really want to dig into that. Realize you're putting the path a little bit further beyond you, but you're experiencing things, which is only going to add to the experience that you can put into your songs and into your art. So that's not lost time. Um, this is a long, long life. I know music is a youth oriented game because they're trying to put people in front of you that look like you so that you will relate to them so that you will buy things from them. But music is a long time pursuit. There's a reason there's always a producer or a songwriter behind every young person that comes up in this music industry because that's a collaborative measure. It maybe took the songwriter 45 years to say the thing that they knew they needed to say but it may only be able to be put into a package of a 25 year old guitar player from Atlanta. Like you don't know, you just don't know. So it's important to learn everything you can meet as many people as you can. And if I had some advice outside of the music industry, it, it may not be, it may even be detrimental to your uh, performance and your excelling in the music industry. But I would say to make sure to make sure that each person that you meet, everything that they have to offer you isn't the reason that you continue to hang out with them. Because I think it's important that you realize that eventually this world is small enough that you're gonna end up knowing most of the people in it, or at least knowing somebody who knows someone in it and your reputation precedes you. I think the only thing that you really have to stand on, a lot of people stand on their success and that gets them a lot further opportunities, but there are a lot of other people that get by on their character. And I think that whether you're in the industry or not, your character is going to follow you everywhere you go. So I say, even if it slows you down, the second may be the best thing for you. But if you want that thing, go get that thing and do it as true and as honest as you possibly can. Have you ever had like doubts on like, you're scared that you're going to burn out eventually? Yes. Yep. Yep. How, how, how what day has that been? Um, in my personal experience, it's been finding a partner that believes in you. Um, I married my wife. We had our 10 year anniversary uh, just a couple weeks ago. Uh, she's actually sitting here. She watches all my shows with me. Uh, Hi. <laughs> she, uh, she, she travels with me because I solo, because I travel as a solo singer songwriter. Um, she often gets to accompany me because I don't have to pay for a band. Nice. And so that's the uh, way to do it. So right now, as it stands, and it took me up until about through up until about five years ago, I'd say, um, of getting jobs, working on this on the side, making this my side hustle. I got to turn it full time. It was probably full time five years ago. I quit my full time job seven years ago, uh, and five years ago was really when I got. So um, I was I was probably thirty years old before I was doing it full time. Um, but I had a wife that was also there with me through all of those things too. So a support group. Uh, sometimes it's a group of friends. I have people that are still not married that are doing it well um, because they have a group of friends because it's, it's the people around you that are going to help you through those days there. Um, yeah. And uh, they're the ones that have to shake you out of it. And I think it's also important as a songwriter to feel the thing that you feel. Um, and I think it's important that when you're in those moments to write out of them because they've, they've, those emotions and those feelings and those situations have visited you for a very specific reason. And the best way to serve it is to make art. Of it. So, yeah. That's, guys, thanks so much. I'm going to do um, love each and every one of you. Please stay in touch and, and let me know how I can help along the ways.